The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. In this episode, I talk about the cleaning, soldering, and other consumable supplies to keep in your lab. Over on the Element 14 community, there are show notes with links to all of the products I mentioned in this episode. Also over there are links to the previous Essentials episodes, which covered passive components like capacitors and active components like transistors and ICs. As the world moves towards surface mount components, breadboard friendly through hole parts are getting hard to find. In fact, when I put together the active components episode, I had a hard time finding through hole ICs. For that reason, I recommend to start stocking up on SOIC or surface mount to through hole adapters. There are at least two options, design your own or buy something off the shelf like these smart boards. Let's use those boards to talk about the consumable supplies to keep on your workbench. There are at least two ways to solder a surface mount IC drag soldering and hot air reflow. Drag soldering is something that's easy to do with almost any soldering iron. First, I attach the board to the work surface with some painter's masking tape so it doesn't move around. Then I use my soldering iron to tack down one corner of the IC to the pads. Then I align the pins and the pads and tack down the other corner. Now I put flux on one side of the IC and finally comes the drag soldering part where I literally drag the soldering iron and my wire solder across all of the pins of the IC. And once that side is done, I apply flux to the other side and repeat the drag process. You might have noticed that this method will almost always bridge pins together. Well, that's where the solder wick comes in. Since I have a lot of flux left over from before, I'm just going to reuse what's already on the board. But if your board is clean, add more flux when using wick because it will help it to work way better. After a couple of quick hits, now there are just nice looking solder joints left over. So with the right supplies and basic tools, surface mount soldering can be easy. Now, if you have access to hot air, a hot plate, or something like my super advanced reflow oven, then you'll want to grab some solder paste. When using hot air, I don't tape my boards to the table. Instead, I put them into a holder. First, I apply paste to the pads. Without a stencil, I don't even bother to try to be neat. I just glop it onto the board. And then when putting the chip on, I don't even spend much time lining that up either. Once the board has paste and a chip, it's time to apply heat. Eventually the flux in the paste boils and then the solder itself will start to melt. Notice how the parts will start to move around or even snap into place when the solder becomes liquid. Surface tension aligns the pins and pads together. If you end up with bridged solder joints, then use the solder wick like I showed before. Parts with a finer pitch are far more likely to bridge, even with a stencil. Hot air definitely takes more practice than drag soldering, and it requires some specialized tools. But it is a great method to learn because then you can more easily rework surface mount components. Now that we have the surface mount ICs soldered to the adapter boards, it's time to do some cleanup. Even though I almost always use no clean flux, I like to clean it off anyway. Remember that no clean means that the flux residue left behind is inert or it won't damage the board. It doesn't mean that there's nothing left behind. First, we'll need some disposable nitrile or nitrile gloves. I start the cleaning by using flux remover to break up the flux residue. Before it evaporates, I scrub it with an ESD safe brush. Next, I rinse with some isopropyl alcohol to wash off both the cleaner and the loosened residue. Sometimes I do another scrubbing pass or I use cotton swabs on the really stubborn areas. At this point, it is just rinse and repeat with the IPA until the board is clean and not at all sticky. At the time of this recording, rubbing alcohol or IPA is difficult to get. When I ordered these supplies, all I could get was this bottle of 70%, which for cleaning an electronics board isn't great. Better than zero, but nowhere near as good as 90 or 99%. I do, however, really like that it came in a spray bottle. That's very useful. On the cotton swabs, please don't use the ones meant for your ears, which somehow aren't meant for your ears. Anyway, 
These industrial swabs don't leave behind much cotton. Although I do prefer double ended swabs so that one side can be for the alcohol and the other stays dry. But they were out of stock when I ordered the rest of the supplies. Just by attaching a chip to this board, we have covered all of the electronics consumables I use most often in my daily electronics work. Let's do a quick review in case you missed them all. When putting together this video, I was thinking a good title would be Bald Engineers Top 10 Things You Should Buy to Stock Up When Soldering That Are Not Just Solder for People Who Don't Solder So Good. See, marketing people like it because it's a top 10 list, and engineers like it because it's a very detailed title, and internet viewers like it because there's a movie meme in there. The problem is, I only came up with five. Number one, solder. Solder comes in forms like wire and paste. The wire is offered in multiple diameters, but my go-to solder is 0.02 inches. If you need to make it thicker, just fold it on itself a couple of times and maybe give it a twist. Rarely do I need to go thinner. As for paste, this is great when working with surface mount parts and hot air. However, keep in mind the paste, especially the flux it contains, does expire. Because of that shelf life, I keep mine in a mini fridge to extend its useful life. We're only on the first one and I already have a bonus. Remember in the episode on soldering tip maintenance, I said, A huge misconception I think people have about soldering irons is that their tips last forever. However, they do wear out. In that episode, we talked about why tips are consumable items. So consider keeping some extras for your iron on hand. Number two, flux. If you're new to soldering without looking at anything you're doing, I already know that you need to use more flux. Three options to consider are this paste, liquid in a pin, or liquid in a syringe. My go-to flux is the syringe, which is intended for surface mount, but I use it for everything. Seriously, everything. Well, solder related. As for the paste, I can't even think of the last time I used it. I had the Element 14 community send me this one just for the video. I almost always use the other two styles. So if you know when to use this one, can you let me know over on the Element 14 community? Number three, cleaning. There are a couple of cleaners to have on hand. First is something to remove flux. After you break up the flux with that, then you'll want some isopropyl alcohol to clean the board. If you can get it, get 90% or higher. Cotton swabs are great for scrubbing stubborn areas of a PCB. My experience has been that flux remover works great, but you always need to rinse the board with IPA anyway. And I know some of you probably just use IPA only and that works for you. My preference is one pass of this and then the rest of my cleaning with IPA. Number four, tape. I use painter's masking tape all the time. I secure boards, stick down components, label stuff, decorate things, and the list goes on. About the only thing I don't use it for is painting. Wait a minute. Another tape to have on hand is polyimid or Kapton tape. This stuff can withstand very high temperatures. It is useful to attach thermal couples or to mask off areas you do not want to get accidentally soldered. With polyimid, do remember that the adhesive will actually give out long before the film does. Number five, adapter boards. As through hole parts get harder to find, adapter boards like these can be very helpful to have on hand. They are also a great way to practice surface mount soldering. Also, also, designing your own could be a great way to practice using a PCB design tool like Altium or my favorite, KiCad or KiCad. Remember that over on the Element 14 community, you can find show notes for this episode, which includes links to all of the products that I mentioned. If you think I missed something or have questions about these supplies, follow the link below and let me know over there. For now, it is time for me to get back to scrubbing flux residue off my electronics workbench with isopropyl alcohol. Hey, I said it right on the first try.